Now, I have the privilege of introducing your next speaker. Um, great guy, fellow senior. You guys might recognize him, Mr. Aaron Justin. I know him. 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 Thanks, Kelly. Isn't Kelly awesome? Kelly is awesome. I lived with Kelly my freshman year in Bell Hall, so it's oh, great Mark. to see how she has grown. It's really, it's awesome. It is awesome. As she dwells on the gospel and learns and grows. So yes, as Kelly said, my name is Aaron Jeske, and I am a senior major in business management. <laughs> Anyways, um, for those of you who do not know, I come from a quaint little family. It's a very small family. Do you watch mine? That actually, seriously, is only part of my family. There are nine kids, and we're missing a few of them. We're missing a few brother-in-laws, and nephews, and nieces. And actually, my parents are here tonight. They're, they're in, in the back over there. If you give them a warm welcome. Yeah. 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 They're great. I love my family. They you know, brought me up in a home where I could be authentic and genuine and grow in knowledge of Jesus. So it's been a great blessing. Uh, I'm going to pray and then we'll get started talking about the word of God. So, Jesus, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that we can come before you and be authentic and that you still love us, that we can come before you with our sin and our filth and that you take that upon yourself and you clothe us in righteousness. Father, thank you so much for who you are. I pray tonight um, that you would just speak to all of our hearts, uh, that you would speak through me, um, and that we would walk away a little bit more like you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are going to start off with, yes, tonight, yes, I'm going to be talking about confession. Um, what confession is, what confession is not. Confession's role in our fellowship with each other and confession's role in our fellowship with Jesus Christ. So I'm going to try to cover all of that in my allotted time. Um, so first, we have 1 John 5-10. through 10. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. Um, some things I want you to know as we look at this verse still. <laughs> Thank you very much. Rachel is awesome, by the way. She does a great job. Really. Um, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Um, I think we, a lot of us have misconceptions about what confession is. Maybe not mentally, but we live as if we do. So a couple things that confession is not. Confession is not telling God something that he doesn't already know, right? That seems pretty simple. God knows everything. He knows your thoughts, what you've done, what you will do. He knows it all. And very often, I don't live that way. We don't live in the knowledge that God knows everything that we do. You can't hide it from him. He knows it. God knows everything. Um, confession is not a means of getting God off your back. I am sort of notorious for this. We, uh, I'll go to God, and I will confess my sin, and we'll talk about what confessing our sin is in a, in a minute. And I, I sort of do that almost to like push him away, to get him off my back and say, okay, God, here are my sins, and so now leave me alone, and I'll keep sinning, is like basically what I do. It's my excuse to almost keep sinning. Um, and I think some of us here probably sure with that. Um, a confession is not necessarily feeling bad about something you did. Okay? We, it's not 
we, do, we don't confess sins to God because we feel bad about them. It, it's much, it goes beyond that. It's much larger than that. Uh, what is confession then? What is confession? Um, in the Greek, the Greek word for confession literally means to say the same thing along with someone or to agree with them. So confession is us agreeing with God that our sin is, in fact, sin. Okay, we're not telling God um, anything new or anything we, he doesn't know. We are agreeing with God that our sin is sin, that what we did was wrong. And we acknowledge that. Um, confession is synonymous with walking in the light, as we talked about in 1 John 5. Bringing our sin out into the open. Um, when we confess, we're not hiding our sin. We are agreeing with God that it is, in fact, sin. Okay? When we're not confessing, we're not agreeing with God that our sin is sin. And we're holding on to it. Um, which is never good. Um, confession is, essentially, a genuine agreeance with God about all known sin in our life and further acknowledgement of our need for a Savior. So let me repeat that. Confession is genuine concurrence or agreeance with God about all known sin in our life and further acknowledgement of our need for a Savior. Now, why is that acknowledgement for our need for a Savior? When we confess sin, when we agree with God that we have sinned, that we have fallen short, we need something to atone for that, right? We're no longer depending on ourselves, but we need to depend on something else to take the place of that sin. Therefore, we're placing our trust and our need in something greater than ourselves, our need for a Savior, when we're confessing to God. Confessing to God is agreeing that we're forgiven and believing that. I think that's something that I struggle with a lot, is all confess the same sin over and over and over to God. No, we don't, we don't need to do that. God has forgiven us. And part of the confession process, we agree with God that our confession is sin, and then he forgives us. And we believe in that forgiveness. Um, Jamani had, had some great thoughts that sometimes we have trouble forgiving ourselves, and that's, that's prideful, right? That's saying that our standard is higher than God's. So we need to forgive ourselves and believe that God has forgiven us when we confess. All right, so what practical applications, what is the effect of, is that the right word? Yes, how does confession affect our fellowship with each other? How does it affect our fellowship with each other? Um, I often hear a lot of, I guess, kind of complaints about our fellowship. I hear people come to me, come to me and say, uh, man, fellowship and crew just isn't what it should be. It just seems like, I don't know, it seems like it's not, it's not quite right. We're not loving each other right. It's, it's, it just isn't what it should be. It's not what, what I think of when I want fellowship. I sometimes feel alone. I feel like I'm not connecting with people. And I, I hear that a lot. And um, perhaps it's because we're not confessing. Um, if you go to the next slide. James 5.16, therefore confess your sins to each other. And pray for each other so that you may be healed. If we look back at 1 John where it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have true, we have fellowship with one another. So if we're confessing our sins, community will be built up. We will have fellowship with one another. And, and enjoy, enjoy one another so much more. Confession also leads to healing. It leads to healing, right? We will be healed. We will be healed. 